<laughs> Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Today, inshallah, we are gonna talk about resurrection. This topic is specially made for grade 7 and for all Muslims at all. By having a look at this picture, what do you think of that? What does this word mean? What resurrection represents to you? Exactly, as you said, resurrection means giving life after death or coming of the dead to life again. Look at this picture and try to imagine it. The great companion Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said that the Prophet, may Allah's mercy and blessings be upon him, said, You will be summoned on the day of resurrection, barefooted, naked, and uncircumcised. He verily the words of God, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم كما بدأنا أول خلق نعيده وعدا علينا إنا كنا فاعلين In English, as we begin the first creation, we will repeat it. That's a promise binding upon us. Indeed, we will do it. Quran chapter number 21 Verse number one hundred. Aisha, the mother of the believers, exclaimed, "Men and women, both, won't they all look at each other?" The Prophet said, "Aisha, the situation they are in is so grim that they would have no time for this." This mention is. Now we have have heated argument. It's impossible to be alive again after death. This argument might be said by many, many of the people who deny resurrection. Coming of the death or coming of the dead to life is not impossible. No one has up to this time put forward any argument to show that resurrection will not happen. Those who do not believe in the resurrection harp on the same old tune, saying, How a dead one can come to life when his body has decomposed and each and every part of it has decayed and reduced to dust. Yes, can you imagine that? To this, are according to common sense and according to the Holy Quran, the answer is that it can happen. As it's not impossible, the thing comes to our imagination and we come across day and night examples of the dead coming to life again. Imam Muhammad Taqi says, Sleeping and waking are the two best examples by which we can fully comprehend the issue of dying and coming back to life. So death is nothing more than a long slump. Secondly, it can be seen when the trees sprout in the spring and die in the autumn. The Holy Quran says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ألم تر أن الله أنزل من السماء ماء فأخرجنا به ثمرات مختلفا ألوانها ومن الجبال جدد بيض حمر مختلفا ألوانها مختلف ألوانها وغراب بسود. In English, do you not see that Allah sends down water from the cloud? Then we bring forth therewith fruits of various colors, and in the mountains are streaks white and red of various hues, and others intensely black. Sort fatter. Chapter number 35, ayah number 27. Look at this picture. The deniers of resurrection had doubts about two basic things. Number one, they say, How can decayed bones come to life? The Holy Quran said, 
concerning these people أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم سورة ياسين In English he has said Who will give life to the pawns which have become ashes? Surah Yasin, chapter number 36, ayah number 78. Number 2. The deniers of the resurrection said what? If the powder, the pawns are, are accepted to come to life again, then who will return them to life? The Holy Quran responds, saying, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم In English, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet Muhammad to tell them He who gave them life in the first place will bring them back to life again Surah Yasin, ayah number 79 Look at these pictures here Now, let me tell you something. If a maker of something said that, he can reassemble the broken parts of his product. He will not be in the wrong, because making a thing is more difficult than assembling it. Once Prophet Ibrahim was passing by the bank of a river. This is a story mentioned in the Quran. Prophet Ibrahim was passing by the bank of a river when he saw a corpse, one portion of which was in water and the other was on the ground. The land and the marlin animals and birds flocked around it, and every animal was eating practically every pet of the dead body. Prophet Ibrahim, after seeing this, asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how will you bring back the dead to life on the day of judgment when this corpse has almost been eaten up by the animals and it has been assimilated in their bodies and their integral part? Allah asked Prophet Abraham, Do you have no faith in my power and belief in resurrection? But Abraham replied, Why not? But I want to satisfy myself by seeing this phenomenon with my own eyes. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and said to him, take four different kinds of birds, slaughter them and mix up their flesh together, and put them on different mountains. Thereafter call out each bird one by one and see for yourself how various portions of the mixed flesh get separated and go to bring back each bird in its original form. Ibrahim السلام, did as he was directed. He slaughtered a pigeon, chicken, peacock, and crow, mixed up their flesh together in one hole, put them on the top of ten different mountains, then he called out each animal, and each one of them appeared before him in its original form. This story mentioned in Surah Al Baqarah. Ayah number 260 In fact, Prophet Ibrahim, the chosen messenger of Allah, is passed through a special test and a trial and is put on the exhausted position while on the other hand there are people like us who have not even passed the initial stage of recognizing things as common. Now, video is done. Before finishing this video, I'd like to ask you a question here and try to consider it well, think about it carefully, and we can discuss the answer together next time. Why does Allah not reward or punish in this world? Was it not better to have this matter settled quickly by rewarding or punishing in this world? And in that way, there would be, there would have been no necessity of the day of judgment. Thanks so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.